Hi guys, welcome to another video from Cichlid Bros. Today we're telling the story of our green terror here, which involves the growth rate and his evolution, as well as the development of the nuchal hump on his head there. Before we get started, please take a second and hit that subscribe and like button down below. We really appreciate your support, and let's dive right in. Before we get started, I just wanted to say that this is technically a gold sum. Gold sum and green tears are used interchangeably in most cases nowadays, but the true green tear has white tips to their fins. Overall, they are very similar species, and I actually talked through the differences in these in a full care guide on the green tear in the upper right hand corner. I would say that green tears have a bit of a reputation of being slow growers from some hobbyists and research we've encountered. However, we haven't really experienced that ourselves. The truth about growth rates is that it depends on a variety of elements. We're firm believers that water quality is the biggest factor here, and that means keeping up with water changes and maintenance, making sure you have a fully cycled tank with absolutely no ammonia or nitrite, and keeping nitrates as low as you can, preferably below 40 parts per million. Having a big tank would definitely factor in here as well. And also feeding high quality foods like frozen bloodworms and bride and shrimp will definitely help them reach their full potential. We've also heard that slightly higher temperatures may encourage growth and we'd recommend keeping temps in the high 70s. So definitely make sure you have a heater or heat your room. Even with this, some green tares are still going to grow slower when compared to some cichlids such as the Oscar here, which grows to be larger in general, so the overall growth rate is much more accelerated. Females can grow especially slow after maybe the first three or four months, and they will likely reach about six to eight inches fully grown, whereas the males can get up to 10 or even 12 inches in the right situation. For our green terror, we picked him up from a Pet Supplies Plus about 13 months ago. He was a tiny little guy about an inch long and was beat up from being in a tank with bigger Jeff Dempsey's and flower horns. I was shocked to find him at this chain store and I just had to scoop him up. He doubled in size those first few weeks, whether that was due to better water parameters and food, I'm not entirely sure. He had that small bump showing at times in the first three or four months when he was younger, so we knew we had a male pretty early on. His dorsal fins were also long and pointed, which is another way to identify males. After being in my 38 gallon tank for the first month or so, I moved him into my 75 gallon aquarium. He grew about a half inch per month over the next three or four months in that tank. The plan was to eventually transfer him over to my brother's 75 gallon aquarium in his high school classroom which had better long-term tank mates with Jack and our Salvini and a couple convicts. I had plans for more peaceful cichlids in my 75 gallon aquarium, so it worked out well for both of us. In July we made the transfer, and at this point its longitudinal growth slowed down some, which is pretty common for green tears. And over the next seven months, he was putting on maybe a half inch every couple months, his growth at this point was more so in his height and in his body as he really bulked up. His nuchal hump started to grow as well starting around November and it's popping even more now. We saw a faint hump when he was about three months old but the hump became more pronounced around the six month mark. From November to January, he continued to put on more height and width, and was obviously still very dominant and vibrant in color. And here he is today at more than six inches, and his nuchal hump is really starting to pop. Most research out there says that this nuchal hump gets more pronounced with dominant males and during breeding, so that definitely makes sense with this green tear. 
Other big cichlids get the same humps such as the Midas and Red Devil, the Frontosa in Africa, and also the Flower Horn, which may be best known for this, as they're usually bred for higher quality and larger humps. Another point to consider here is that some growth in size and even in that hump is based on the genetics of the individual fish. There are always going to be exceptions out there of either faster growing fish or even stunted growth. So you could be doing everything right and your green tear may not grow as expected. I've always noticed that green tear seems susceptible to internal parasites as we've encountered this briefly with ours. We've heard of many other instances in the hobby out there. Not a scientific fact, but just an observation that we've had, and this could obviously slow down growth during the treatment of the illness. But green tear males can top off around 10 or 12 inches, and here's a 10 inch green tear at my local fish store. He's in a big tank here, so he's probably benefited from that extra room to grow. Our green tear has gone from roughly one inch to maybe six in 13 months. It's been awesome to see him grow over that time and we can't wait to see him fully mature. But in summary, if you're trying to get your green tear to grow faster, try to keep your water quality perfect, consider a large tank and get some quality frozen foods to mix in with her diet, and maybe even consider raising their temp just a few degrees. And lastly, just have patience and enjoy the ride. We hope you like the evolution of our Green Terror. He's been a very rewarding fish to keep and he's one of our favorites. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you next week.